what do we think about Donnie's work over here? I think he did a hell of a job. I'd let him paint my engine bay. I don't know about the outside of my car, but I'd, I'd let him paint my engine bay. Yeah, honestly. It's nice work, Donnie. It's good yeah, form. It it's got a little bit of yeah. razzle dazzle to it, too. I don't know if it's supposed to or if that was just Cricket's metal dust while he was grinding. But it's, it's beautiful. I stopped working when he started painting. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Yeah, well, it does have a razzle dazzle. explain your contraption so this is a um, hydraulic like porter power for like a body press but we stripped out the screw on our bead roller up here and it was also a pain to loosen and tighten every single time to get it to the exact same amount of tension so we just wedge this and we can get it done a lot faster yeah it's a hybrid we don't we modify everything in this shop So as you can see, the wall is erect. We have great wall of China. Great wall of China. We have a little piece out because I need to actually be able to weld into this corner. And the guy that built the cage prior to put so many damn bars back here that I don't fit. So if you want to be a fabricator, stay slim. Because if you got to climb through this stuff, it's not fun. Not and wear a helmet. Because boy, I got so many dents on my head from the day. I'm not a happy camper, but I'm what I am happy about is a sweet block off plate. So we have all that done. Now we're doing the infrastructure on the base plate that we're gonna install as well to hide uh, the hump for the seat and cover it all up and have it look similar to the uh, block off plate on this for the firewall. So right now we're just welding in this square stock and we're gonna do another bar going back to the wheel well there and then one on that side to go back just so we can have a nice flat plane to be able to bolt to and then it's gonna end up ending back here just like maybe an inch over this and it'll all be closed off it'll all be nice and then we can start doing our cool little bulkhead for the radiator lines and the fuel lines so and we also have a huge storm coming in joel i won't be here for it because they let us go home early before because we have tornado warnings 60 mile an hour winds tons of rain all sorts of stuff and my dog's home alone and also my house might not be there when i get there so had a little chestnut. So we're almost done doing all of the boring stuff that doesn't look that great because it's just structure for it to sit on. But once that is made, then we'll be able to do the fun stuff, which is more cardboard, more cutting of the aluminum plates, and then bead rolling. So I'm very excited to finish that part off. And then once that's done, we can do some more stuff back here, like do our bulkhead, put back in our fuel cell, get all of our lines set up for the bulkhead, also mount our rear mount radiator, which is right back over there. Um, and then once that's all set up, we can get to the front of the car, which is almost done. There's a little bit extra stuff in the front. I have to do headlight brackets, a bash bar, probably some new intercooler piping because we're changing the um, turbo manifold. So stay tuned. A lot of cool stuff is about to happen to this. This is the nitty gritty, dirty, crappy part that no one likes to do. The cleaning, the cutting out of the old stuff, and then putting in all of the mild steel to put fresh, shiny aluminum in. back of their leg, they f***ing yaaah!
good? We'll take that. From a French Canadian, that's the best we're gonna get. <laughs> he hates it. Do it again. You need to do it again? Yeah, we gotta redo it because you don't like it. Yeah, we didn't like your reaction. So now we gotta start over from scratch. Thanks, Tommy. Way to ruin it for us. Start over. If you don't like it, I don't like it. Uh, luckily for both of you, I don't give a shit what either one of you like. I love it. Looks great. I care what you think. Does the other Canadian like it? I like it. Looks good. <laughs> I don't remember that hole being in there. You're not cricket. No, cricket lets me weld stuff that people will never see. So, <laughs> listen, there's great penny. The lines just aren't that straight. I mean, it looks wonderful. This one's probably my best one right here. That one's good. That's that great. one's pretty decent too. You'll never see it though, so it doesn't matter. It exactly. Just needs to have penetration. Oh, that's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. You said it, so it's not going anywhere. We decided to do a step up on it because our bead roll steps up, and we don't want a gap between where the battery actually sits and where the battery tray. Is supposed to mount to and we don't want it to bow down and make our plate look bad so we stepped it up so now it'll sit flat on there let's give her a test shall we yeah, it's gonna be a little warm in there it's all right just don't push down on that part that part we probably need to grind those welds down they're a little high yeah. well whose fault is that oh it's definitely my fault i mean it's your fault for letting me weld honestly the only way anybody will know that you did it is if they watch this video. So hopefully nobody watches this video. I hope they do, and then I hope they have men in black syndrome and just boop, forget about you welding. Yeah. You know, we have a videographer that can just cut that whole, this whole section out. Like it never existed. Okay. I'm not that ashamed. I weld like twice a year. So, you know, I'll take what I can do. Yeah, not bad. Just gotta put some flat spots on the top. Yeah. The old Donnie always hitting sh in the background of videos. Oh, it's perfect. Perfect. Stand on it. It's almost like our math math. Yeah. Tape measures work 50% of the time. Every time. Donnie's got a cookie. Where'd you get the what? cookie from? Donnie? Yeah, yesterday. They got roads named after you. It's called One Way. We got um, pretty much this whole partition block off and this like rear seat delete area. Really happy with it. Yes. Love how it's coming together. We're gonna outline a little bit of how we and why we do the things we do when it comes to these type of block offs. So you notice before we made a big T structure. For one, that T structure allows us to build it in four pieces and it also gives it support through the center. But the best part of it is that we can actually bead roll the pieces individually. Cause our bead roller only has about 18 inches, if yeah, that. That's given it a lot. Yeah. 18 inches of depth, so that means if it was like one whole big piece, then we wouldn't be able to actually do the bead rolling in this kind of pattern. So yeah. the four and pieces helps a lot. Where was it? It was this part right here, we actually had to do in two different things. So I started here, bead rolled all the way around, and then it Got couldn't, it yeah. wouldn't go any farther than right there. So you have to like figure out where you're putting your bead roll, you know, the, your piece of metal before you just stick it in the bead roller and start cranking and find out like, boop, it hits the corner. So you have to like trace it around it before you tighten it to make sure everything will fit through the bead roller. And if it doesn't, you have to find that sweet spot of where you can get one corner to start, go all the way around to where it'll end right there. And, and also was, you gotta remember, we're working with a lot of like Harbor Freight kids. Like our metal break is Harbor Freight. Our um, bead roll is actually Eastwood. an Eastwood piece, which is nice, but it'd be nice if it was a little bit deeper and it would also be nice if it had a motor on it. So it wasn't a two-man really. operation. I like the team sports. Yeah, but it's, you yeah. know, it's, it's team bonding every time, you know, you gotta work the patterns. You go fast on the straights and then you go nice and slow for the turns and then a little faster on the straights. And, and you also can't blame one of us. You can blame both of us. I still like blame you. him. 
Yeah. <laughs> if you're the one feeding it, yeah. you know, you cranked it too fast. Yeah. Well, that'll happen. Inconsistent cranks. Crank yank. So now that we have all of that done, we also did, um, underneath this has a structure to support everything because obviously you guys know batteries are really heavy. Um, and then we have a plate that goes up underneath that that's going to hold all of our radiator um, lines and our fuel lines that come out of there. And we're going to start on the radiator soon, so we're very excited. We got all of this stuff done, this. and it's all, look at that, stand right on that. And that's 18 gauge aluminum on top. Yeah. That's so what we, the structure's for. we built it up and then we also bead rolled the plate that goes up onto the underneath where the battery tray is. So it would actually like rest flat on the battery tray. So the bead roll didn't sit up above the metal. So when we tighten it down, it doesn't squish and show a bow in it. So we actually bead rolled the underneath part to match the top shiny part. Yeah, so that way when we tighten it down, it doesn't like pinch the aluminum down, then it starts looking all wonky. It's also nice because we kind of designed everything to where we can take these five um, nut bolts out of nuts and bolts out of the quarter window and get to our battery, change the fire suppression tank, have access to our fuel filter, which is going to be over on the other side. So all that worked out good for us because originally when this car was built, this battery was actually where the stock gas tank is like directly underneath that. Yeah, pretty much underneath that, underneath the car. So every time we needed to be jump started or a terminal came loose or something stupid happened or we had to change a battery, it was a whole mission. So we kind of learned our lesson on that one. So everything is now in a serviceable location. Same thing with the fuel filter. It used to be mounted under the car. Not that we really service fuel filters that much, probably once a year, but still. It's nice to have access to stuff. And it's going to look really cool. Yeah. Hard and it was lines. nice that we were able to retain a lot of like our fuel cell mounting structure and all that stuff. Because originally we did talk about moving the fuel cell doing a forward mounted radiator and kind of simplifying this build down to being more, you know, just like a simple grassroots style car, but a street race car, not a full race car. Right. But as we started kind of talking about it, realized it's going to be way more work to cut all of this structure out, move the fuel cell, put the radiator in the front, redo the whole tube front structure and all that other stuff, just so to keep things as simple and moving forward as possible, we can just kind of put it all together with all the stuff where it was before just upgrade our parts. Plus, if you saw the size of our radiator, there's no way in hell it's. Oh no, that, up that thing wasn't gonna fit in the front no. of anything. So we talked him into the biggest radiator he could possibly fit because he hates overheating and we hate him overheating. Yeah. So we like to keep our cars under 200 degrees. That big PWR radiator will do it. Great day at the track because the only thing you do is fuel up the car and change tires. Yeah, that's it. Love it. Especially if you don't actually have to mount and dismount the tires, you just put them on the car. Yeah, that's why we like to show up with a bunch of mounted wheels. Poor Donnie. Know, Unfortunately, when the day goes really well, that's when we run out of tires pretty quickly. And that's why we got Donnie. Yeah, our sweet, boy. Our sweet Canadian boy. That's a nice hat, Donnie. Fresh. Fresh, yeah. I can tell because there's no greasy hey, no, fingerprints it has on it. one black stain on it. Already? That was, that was on it from the shelf. All okay. It, all it took was one day of Joel giving him a hard time about keeping his hair under locks and then his locks under locks. Then here he is. Let he it all hang out to hairnet like he's in the food industry or he something. Didn't wear a hairnet he's getting he hair in all my fabrication stuff. equipment, okay? Hey, my hair still be feeling that pain, I tell you what. Yeah, it looked like Donnie had some grays for a little while. Yeah, the boy's been killing it on the E36. I mean, that thing is basically like a frame up resto. It's got new wheel bearings, new brake calipers, rotors, coilovers. I mean, new everything e pretty much on it. Yeah, new, new, new e brake cables, cables, everything. New shoes, like all the stuff nobody ever really touches when you're doing it, they're, they're doing it. So hats off to them. Yeah. The only thing you don't want to ever really do is have to take axles out of an E36. Anybody who has an E36 knows those struggles. Yeah. So they're just sitting there staring at the axles now. I don't gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> like rear wheel bearings, I'm like, ah, oh, good luck. Yeah. So yeah. if anybody's in the market for an E36 S54, this might be available. Oh yeah. But it is new, new, new. That don't... is a 2023 E36. Yeah, from 1996. Yeah. If that makes any sense. God, it's pretty though. Brand new paint, brand new everything. Every little clip, every little piece of plastic. The fact we're even putting fender liners back in it is just kind of like, yeah. it's backward, but you know, I, I appreciate the hustle. Yeah, even Joel got in on the phone. I saw him welding. Oh yeah, God, he, Joel is aluminum welding is the scariest thing I've ever seen. And he picked like the shittiest piece of cast aluminum <laughs> from 
a 30 year old car to try and his yeah to try and learn how to aluminum weld it's like cricket i can do this go right ahead buddy have fun hey the two pieces of metal became one so they did he did what it was intended to do you welded you did a great job joel considering it was what it was and he finally got it too he's like cricket this is what you mean by cast sucks to weld boom unless it's like brand new cast yeah you know a garrett compressor housing with like a nice vibrant 90 cast like that that'll blend together nicely good cast that not awesome. mass-produced cast from China. Yeah, not the one. But you did good. China. That's off to you. Thanks. You know, getting out of your comfort zone. He even asked. It wasn't like, hey, Joel, you want to do this? Like, Cricket, you think I can, uh, can I weld this? Yeah, I did the hop same thing. Hop on it, kangaroo. Hop on it. I did the same thing today, but mine was a little less of a... Oh, yeah, you got to weld today, too. Effect. Everybody got to weld this week. And I didn't have to hold the camera but once. So everyone, doing sure. we're doing the round robin today. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. So I'm pretty. I'm looking pretty forward to our Polish guy coming back too. Yeah. Adam. Adam will be in the house in under two weeks, which is really cool because we miss him, and we get to work on the F30. So we had a couple of people asking about what's going on with the F30 and why we haven't got our finished video on it. So as you guys know, we had the diesel transmission from the 8 HP 70 which is out of the Jaguar or the 7 Series diesel BMW in Europe. It was tuned for diesel. So if you guys know about diesels, you know that they only rev up to a certain amount because the diesel engine doesn't rev that high. It goes 3,000 RPMs, 3,200 max. And we're trying to rev up to like 9,000. Yeah. So there's like 6,000 RPMs worth that we need to get, and it wasn't getting it because the transmission was already tuned to shift at certain points. So anytime we'd get up over it, which was right around the time that we get boost, he would automatically either kick it into neutral or just shut it down. Yeah. So Adam's coming back with a fix. Either he's going to do it with the IO can or he's going to throw the GCU in there, which I have one for my 8 HP. I, I don't I know. I have a GCU regardless. I mean, stock BMW stuff works to a certain extent, but like if you have the capabilities, like you can flash your stock BMW ECU for your motor or you can just put a standalone in. Obviously, you're going to get better results with a standalone than trying to flash your stock computer. But, you know, there's positives and negatives, like, you know, integrating all of your stock stuff still working with... That car is a big thing for us trying to make it, you know, as comfortable as a street car as possible because we have all the little pieces working, like the push start works, the, you know, stock gauges and everything work. Even a little display in the middle works, so. I'm just trying to get a new daily to drive home. That thing? Sure. You don't burn a tank of gas on the way there and back. Well, if you keep her out of boost, you'll be alright. Yeah, I'm not going to go into boost. Just want to want it in case you need it. It's like having a fire extinguisher that works. You're, you're going you're gonna to think you're driving your <laughs> girl's F30 and then you go to pass somebody on yeah. 46 you're like, ah! Okay. Oh no. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we are good. I'm ready. Thank you guys for watching our episode. Like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends. Tell us what you want to see us do next. You know, something crazy. Give us some ideas. You know, we have a whole lot up here in the brain bucket that we want to do, but we want to see what you guys have in mind. Like, what do you want to see us do with the channel? Where would you like to see it go? What would you like to see us build? And believe Who it or do not. You like? You guys have a lot more influence on what goes on this channel than we do. So Absolutely. give us some good ideas. We need them. Yeah. So should we just drop a couple of our ideas and like let them comment? Let them know. Yeah. So what was that Lexus one we wanted to do? I wanted to do an RC build, a Lexus RC coupe, which I thought would be cool because you don't see a lot of those drifting. I know there's one guy who did that a while ago, but do some like oddball engine in it, like a B58 or something like that. Instead no, no, of just... no, no, no. What was the Mercedes engine that you wanted? No, I wanted to do the uh, Toyota Century engine. Oh, that's the right. The V12 that's in Mike's car. Just do it not to be fast, just to sound really sweet, like an F1 car pretty much, and just, you know, have it real peppy, put a lightweight flywheel in it and stuff. But, you know. I don't think he's going to go for that because really most of the stuff we build is pretty, you know, directly purposed. We are still trying to do something saucy with either the Pajero or with Wendy. We have a K-Series sitting over there and I would love to pop into one of those two. We also have a safari car. We don't call them safari cars. We call them booning rigs. So me, Joel, and Chris have been planning on building a jump buggy, a E36 off-road buggy, for like three years now. And we just saw Adam just came out with his R32 safari yeah. rig. So I feel like we need to make one, and we need to make it more aggressive. And you know what? I was so terrified that the, um, the E36 convertible being our jump car would be a terrible idea until I saw the fact that we could put a whole other E36 on top, on top of an of E36. It. So I have a lot more faith that that car is not going to kill us if we do decide to jump it. We're definitely going to jump it. We need to jump Somebody's it. Somebody's going to jump it. Yeah. Well, let's stack all those ramps up on top of each other from the oh, yeah. I'll LZ. I'll jump that in anything here. That's fine. That's a little jump if I'm going straight. I mean, like, I want to see this thing, like... So, like, take it to Hyperfest and go in the rally course. Take it off some sweet jumps. 
What do you think about that? We already got some ideas on how to lift that thing. We're not going to share with you because I don't need nobody stealing my ideas. Yeah. But we want to hear your ideas as well, getting back on topic. So if you can think of something cool off the, off the wall that no one's done before, but we can sell it to our bosses, that's really what's important. Mm -hmm. you know? Show us what you think. Give us some ideas. You know, can't always be us. I'll leave it up to you this time. Tommy, give us a kick. A kick? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there he is.